Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about these things here. These are lithium ion batteries. Now, for those of you that have come to fixed wing models via multicopters and helicopters, you'll be very used to putting in LiPo batteries. And I'm exactly the same. I have an awful lot of LiPo batteries with different sizes, capacities, 3S, 4S, to fit all the various plane models that we fly here. But one of the things that I've noticed is that Ben, a friend of mine, was using a lot of lithium iron packs. And the lithium iron packs were giving him fantastic performance in the fixed wings. So I need to say thanks to Ben for helping me figure this out because I'd completely missed this trick. So first of all, what we're going to do then is we're going to talk a little bit about the lithium ion, why it's different from LiPo. We'll do a comparison between these packs and similar weighted packs in LiPo, and then we'll talk about what that actually means if you're a fixed wing pilot. Because by using these packs, you can get an awful lot longer flight time for the same weight of battery in your model. Now there are some fundamental changes between these packs and standard LiPo batteries that we're all used to. They will discharge to a much lower level, you can get away with about 3 volts or just under 3 volts a cell is empty on these guys. A lot of the weight in these lithium ion batteries is actually due to the capacity. One of the reasons that you can get such fantastically high current out of these lithium polymer batteries, these LiPo packs, because there is an awful lot of material in the electrodes inside this pack to be able to deliver the 50, 60, 70 amps that you need to fly a multirotor. But all of that material adds up to a relatively heavy pack. So the actual energy density inside the two packs is kind of similar. But whereas in the LiPo pack, we sacrifice an awful lot of the weight in the pack for the ability to deliver really high currents, Whereas in the lithium ion packs, particularly these ones from 3DXR, it's all about the capacity. So the relative C rating of these lithium ion packs is pretty low. So as you can see here on this 7000 milliamp hour pack one, it only goes from 2C to 10C. But that does mean for this 7000 milliamp hour pack, it will comfortably deliver 14 amps until it's completely discharged. It will let you run up to 70 amps for a brief period of time. And that is more than enough, even for something like a mini Talon plane. So although a lot of the planes that we're flying these days have 30 and 40 amp ESCs, when you're cruising along at 30, 40, 50% throttle, you're using a very small amount of current, typically anything from five to seven amps. So the ability to supply 2C on a 7,000 milliamp hour pack means that it's going to be absolutely fine. The other thing about these packs is they're actually made up of 18650 cells. Now we've looked at 18650 cells before, those are the kind of ones that are used in the vaporizers that smokers are turning to at the moment, and even Fact Shark have brought out an adapter that we looked at a while ago that allows you to put 18650 cells in a case, and that's what these things are actually made up of, loads of those high quality cells in a particular package. So the other thing that 3DXR have done is they've actually created custom packs for people that want very particular sizes. Because you can see this 7000 is actually two sets of four cells together, while this 14,000 milliamp hour pack is actually a whole range of them side by side. It's worthwhile going have a look at the 3DXR website because we have the 7000 and the 14000 milliamp hour here and we'll talk about what we're using them for in a second, but they do lots and lots of different shapes and sizes and they also do custom ones as well. So if you wanted a single string of batteries that go together that you could put inside a large carbon tube inside the wings of the craft itself to give you maximum space in the fuselage, this is the kind of technology that would allow you to do it as well. So we've talked about a couple of the differences between lithium polymer and lithium iron. Let me show you the biggest one. So here is a trusty kitchen scales. First of all, I'm going to put on here the 5,000 milliamp hour pack that we first started flying our mini Talon with. Uh, this pack here is about 400 grams. It's just about a gram under. After some fantastic feedback when we first got the Mini Talon from a lot of you subscribers, I then stuck a 4S pack into the model and it was transformed. With 4S, the Mini Talon is absolutely fantastic. So I've been using this 4000 milliamp hour pack for the Zazzy, but also for the Mini Talon 2. I can put it right up in the nose in the Mini Talon and get the center of gravity spot on. 
If I now put the 7,000 milliamp hour enduro on, which has nearly twice the capacity of that 4S 4,000 milliamp hour pack, but this is still a 4S 2P 14.8 volt pack, so it's a 4S equivalent. So by using this pack in my Mini Talon, I'm getting an awful lot longer flight times because I now have 7,000 milliamp hour so that I can pull on for my flight versus four or 5,000 with a traditional LiPo battery. Now, of course, you can get LiPo batteries that are slightly lighter than this with lower C ratings, but this is a really good example with the batteries that I'm actually using of how much more bang for the book you get with lithium iron in terms of milliamp hour capacity. The other pack that I'm using here, the 14,000 milliamp hour, uh, this is for those really, really big planes, but actually what I've done is I've made a little adapter to take it from the XT90 to the XT60 connector on here, because I'm using this with the little charger that we looked at a while ago to charge batteries in the field. And again, this is fantastic for that. I don't have to lug around really big batteries. I can put this in the pack with that little charger. I can charge five or six batteries out of this, depending on the discharge level, without running out of power. To give you an idea of what's possible with these batteries, uh, one of my friends has been using one in a twin-engined plane and managed to get 99 kilometers distance out of it. Now, to be honest, that was because he was actually flying in circuits, um, but the total elapsed distance was 99 kilometers. And the only reason he had to land at that point was the low voltage alarm from the ESC kicked in. Because the thing about lithium ion, the other big difference from lithium polymer, is lithium ion will stand to be discharged lower than lithium polymer and not be unhappy. So with a LiPo battery, anything kind of 3.5 volts and below is considered completely empty and ready to be recharged. With a lithium ion battery, you can get down to just under three volts a cell and the lithium ion pack will be fine. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're using electronic speed controllers to make sure that the, any low voltage shutoff that you have in the model is set low enough so that if you want to, you can really push these batteries and get the maximum flight time out of the capacity available. Last thing to talk about then is the C rating. We've talked about the fact that the majority of the weight in a lot of the LiPo packs that we're using is down to the very large electrodes in there to support the large current. And these guys don't have the big electrodes. They have the majority of their weight dedicated to the capacity. But let's talk a little bit more about that 2C to 10C discharge piece. So for this 7,000 milliamp hour pack, it means that as we've talked about, it, you can run it at 2C all day long until it's discharged and it's happy. Now that's 14 amps continuous. Now in a lot of the planes that I'm flying at the moment, it has 30 or 40 amp speed controllers. And those are there to support the motor at full tilt. So the motor at full tilt is only going to be pulling 30 or 40 amps in total. But what you'll find is that when you're pootling around in the sky, it's probably only running at about five to seven amps. So for the majority of a flight, particularly for a large UAV style plane, well, once you get at altitude, you're just making headway, then 14 amps is going to be more than enough. You can discharge this battery up to 6C for one minute. Now, 6C on this 7,000 milliamp hour pack is a 42 amps. So that's really great. So it means that you can climb at full throttle, you can punch out, you can do all those kind of things on the plane. If you need to, that's available, but you only have about a minute of that before you have to throttle back and give the battery a chance to catch its breath. Or the 10C rating on this is only available for about three or four seconds maximum. Now, 10C, of course, on this thing is 70 amps. And in a plane, you're almost never going to get to that stage. Even with the lower discharge rating for 2C to 10C, hopefully you can see that this is a really good option for fixed wing models. Learning about lithium iron and using it in the models, particularly things like the Mini Talon, has been a revelation for me. And for those planes where I'm looking for longer distances and I want the maximum flight time for the weight of battery that I can fit inside, lithium iron is definitely gonna be my choice. So again, I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at this thing. But if you're a fixed wing pilot and you are looking for longer flight times, then lithium ion, particularly these kind of packs, are definitely worth a look.
Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.